My name is Maria Perry and um, I've worked with Dr. Baranowski on previous workshops in Romania and in Spain and I'm very happy to be here in Poland. We're going to discuss the difficulties of teaching English pronunciation in a multicultural environment. We're speaking now from Kensington, from my flat which is near Kensington Palace and I'm afraid in the background you can hear the bells of St Mary Abbott's Church. They're very famous bells because um, they're rung by hand so unfortunately we can't arrange them for them to be stopped for this presentation. Now most of you will realize that in English there are five vowels A, E, I, O, U. What people don't always realize is that there are 13 diphthongs. Diphthongs are a mixture of two vowels to form one sound. And there is a very good sentence which I was taught at school. Who would know ought of art must learn and then take his ease. Now those 13 diphthongs are all the sounds you need in the English language. Ought, by the way, is uh, an archaic word and it means anything. So who would know ought, anything about art, must learn and then take his ease. Um, these sounds are formed by the position of the lips and the second half by the position of the tongue in the mouth. It's a little bit difficult to show you um, on camera uh, where your tongue is, but we'll have a try. Now I have with me my very dear friend Pilar, who's a willing pupil. Pilar is Spanish, her name is Pilar Santa Maria Hernando, and I'm going to ask her to report, uh, to repeat these um, sounds after me. So, the first set of vowels are made by rounding the lips. Speech therapists call them the lip rounding vowels. Pilar, will you follow me in doing O, 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 A, A. Now you'll see that when we get to A, as in art, the mouth is as wide as it ever goes in ordinary speech. The second set of vowels must learn and then take his ease are made by the position of the tongue. So if you say must, try saying that everybody, must. Pila, must. Must. And your tongue is in the bottom of your mouth. Learn. Learn. That's right. Now where did your tongue go to? I think it went uh, down to up. It went up a little bit, so must learn, and and the, t the tongue is halfway up the mouth. Then tongue a little higher. Take everybody say take. Pila take take. And where did the tongue go? Up up, and then his, and then. Ease. And you'll see that on this E sound the lips are fully uh, stretched and you'll also find, if you all now try to say ease, that your tongue is pressed hard against your back teeth. The tongue should be right up near the teeth ridge. As well as our vowels and our diphthongs, there are some um, sounds in English which are simply made by the escape 
of the breath. And these are called fricatives because there is friction of breath through the lips. And the main fricatives are as in had or hat and th, which I think many people find very difficult to say. Chinese people have a great deal of difficulty. The, which is th, with voice, that is called a voiced fricative. And then we have those fam that famous quartet, sh, sh, and ch, ch. When I was a girl, I found French people had huge difficulty learning to say ship, sheep, chip, cheap. Of course, one of the difficulties of teaching English pronunciation is that there are many words in English which uh, are spelled the same but pronounced differently. Pilar, would you like to try some of these sentences? We'll see if she gets 10 out, 8 out of 8. The horseman had a row over who should row the boat. Oh, go on. I wrote the... I read. That I is. read the times. the times every day, but yesterday I read that... There will be more bad weather. Okay. The bandage was wound around the wound. Oh, good girl. <laughs> yes. The reviews <laughs> dump was so full that they had to refuse to take any more rubbish. So really, um, I think that's wrong. Go on. We must polish the polished furniture. Not quite right. <laughs> Go on. He ate his dessert in the desert. Good. <laughs> yes. Um, what is this? Since. Since there is no time like the present, he decided to present the gift. Good. I did not object to the unidentified object. Good. That's very good. Um, I'll just run through this again for everybody's benefit. The oarsman had a row over who should row the boat. I read the times every day, but yesterday I read that there will be more bad weather. The bandage was wound around the wound. Pilar did very well on that one. The refuse dump was so full that they had to refuse to take any more rubbish. You could, of course, say they had to refuse to take any more refuse. We must polish the Polish furniture. He ate his dessert in the desert. Well, that's quite easy. Since there is no time like the present, he decided to present the gift. And lastly, I did not object to the unidentified object. So you see, the same spelling with a different stress can have very different meanings. It's a pity we haven't got a Swedish friend with us this afternoon because Swedes have the opposite problem from uh, Spanish people. The Swedes um, cannot say the sound J, which Spanish people do so well. And um, I always think of Swedes um, yumping. They are always yumping into swimming pools. How would you say that word? Jumping. Well done. Um, sorry. It's a little bit silly, but these points do differ very much. And when we get on to the difficulties of the Chinese people, I think you begin to become much more fascinated by this topic. 
The other great difficulty when it comes to English pronunciation is, of course, English spelling.